I'm Philip James, and uh, just had my interview with Keith Andrew, and it was it was fun stuff, man. He's a he's a really awesome guy. He's he's on top of his game, and just the message that he's sending out there, showing that whether you have a disability or don't have a disability, the need for everyone to just come together and work. For us all to get to the next level is just so, it's amazing. It's its so beautiful what he's doing and if anybody has the opportunity to interview with him. I am your host Keith Andrew and you're watching the Keith Andrew Network. Today it's episode 607 and I'm here with Philip James. I just want to say thank you for being a guest on my talk show. Thank you for the invite man. Yeah, the honor's all mine. For people who want to know what my talk show is about, the whole point of my talk show is to show people that even though I have an learning disability, I can still mouth to something. And at the same time, I'm able to turn myself into an example for people out there dealing with any types of learning disabilities and disabilities then never give up and prove people wrong. Prove to them that labels do not dictate who you are and who you're going to be. It's to prove to them it's them out to something. So hashtag break the labels. So that being said, half hour, 33 minutes of your time. And first, first thing I do want to point out is that you are a professional actor and a film editor. And also, you have a weekly podcast that you do called Inspiration Grants. So with that one being said, uh, what can you tell us about your weekly podcast? Um, so it's on Instagram. You could find me at Philip James Actor. I do videos every Wednesday morning, uh, Inspiration Graham. It's kind of like a little pick-me-up. I mean, I know sometimes it can be hard with work and school and if you have children, your significant other, just, just life in general could tend to be very difficult from time to time and I just want to you know, just tell you to keep pushing, remind you that it does get better. No, absolutely. And what was your first inspiration with that? Like, who influenced you to start the whole thing? Uh, you know, I... I'd have to give it to my parents, actually. They always, my my mother is always, her saying is just living the dream every time you ask her what's going on. I mean, she got into a nasty accident, shattered both knees, and you give her a call, and she'll say just living the dream is pushing. And my father is a Vietnam vet, double amputee, and, you know, you, you'd expect people with disabilities like that to be somewhat little grouchy or what have you, but he's the happiest man I ever met in my life. So my whole life I've always seen people pushing through and it gets better and just keep pushing, man. <laughs> no, absolutely. First question, and well, first off, I want to say um, to your father, thank you for your service. That's number one. But just what I was going to ask you is who influenced you to become an actor and how many years have you been acting? Uh, once again, I'm a, I'm a lucky guy to be raised by the parents I was raised by. Um, my parents are the ones that influenced me into it. Uh, I did a show when I was a child, and they said I killed it. And they uh, kept urging me to pursue it. And my brother was an artist, and he's phenomenal at it. And my parents just pushed him to do it, so we kind of spent like the first portion of both of our lives really just pursuing and chasing the dream, living the dream. No, absolutely. Now, the next question I was going to ask you is, what were some of your favorite roles, and have you ever been criticized? Uh, well, everyone gets criticized. 
<laughs> Especially how you criticize yourself. You are your own worst critic at all times. Um, as far as my favorite show, that's that, that's a difficult one, man. Because, you know, every single time I book a gig or I'm on set, it's just a dream come true. I love being there. I love working on every project I get cast on and... I really couldn't say that one was my favorite. I, every single gig I've ever had had its own moment of this is this is awesome. This is this is the dream and just yeah, it's just it, it's always great whenever you book a gig. <laughs> no, I agree with you. Now, was there ever a time where you had a conflict with a castmate, and how did he get through the skit? Well, you know, from from time to time, two people are always going to, like, clash and not agree on something or just have different views, and that'll create a little bit of conflict. But, I mean, you always just got to find a way. It's, it, it, it's going to get shot, or the curtain's going to rise, or you still have to show up to work at the same time. It's even with your regular nine-to-five job. There's... There's always going to be something or someone, and it's up to you to figure out how you can make the best of the situation and still rise to the top, hopefully with them right by your side. Okay. Now, the next question I was going to ask you is something for people out there with disabilities want to know. For people who have disabilities, what are your words of wisdom for them to reach their dreams? Is that... It's right in front of you. You just got to reach out and get it. Now, for <clears throat> certain people who may have certain learning disabilities, physical disabilities, uh, mental, emotional disabilities, whatever your disability may be, the universe gave you in particular that disability because you personally are strong enough to deal with it. You may have to do a little more work than someone who isn't an amputee or someone who doesn't have a, 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 a mental disorder or wh whatever the issue may be. There's a reason why you have it because you can deal with it. You got this. You may have to do a little extra work, but guess what? You're strong enough to do it. No, absolutely. Now, the next question I was going to ask you is social media, with Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Do all your following and followers influence people to work with you, or do you need to have the talent and heart for it? Oh, uh, hmm, that's a good question. <laughs> um, you know, my, uh, a, a lot of my followers are fellow artists and also just average Joes or there's a, there's a, um, I actually have a, a, a neurologist that follows me and they tell me that it, my inspiration grams really boost them up. It's, I mean, ev everyone all around people, I hope that answered your question, possibly, did it? A little bit, but in the, you know, with Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, do you use social media to, to get acting parts, or do you use like New York casting, um, Exter, or what, Access? Yeah, backstage casting networks, Actors Access. I I use them all. Um, I do use social media to submit for work and whatnot. I follow a bunch of casting directors, and from time to time they'll let out a breakdown and say, hey, I'm looking for this, and hey, if you catch it, you can submit for it, and it's same same rat race, whether it be social media or Actors Access or Backstage or, or yeah, it's, it's all the same grind. I use it all. <laughs> I'll submit for anything through anywhere. Now, what were some of your favorite sites that helped you get your very first gig and said, you know what, I, I found something that works? Um, well, when I first started, I was non-union, so I used a few websites that have a lot of student films and whatnot. That's a 
it's a great way to get your bangs and really get into things. And it's, you you can you can learn from being on that set of a student film or 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 any any other non uh, like. Any, any other like non TV show or, or film or Broadway show, uh, anything that's on the lower field of things, it's a great opportunity for you to just reach out, strengthen yourself, build your build your acting muscles, and train, 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 train. All right. Now, what about what are your goals like? Everything you did up to this point, what is next for you? Uh, well, the position I'm in right now, I just have to keep grinding. Uh, keep submitting all the time, keep going to workshops with uh, casting directors and representation. Keep submitting myself, keep going to all the networking opportunities I see to allow myself to shake as many hands as possible. Um, right now, I'm actually in the process of seeking representation for a manager, so that's kind of my head focus. Of course, I'm still submitting, trying to do the work myself, and even after I sign with the manager, I'll still be doing all the work I can, plus whatever work they tell me to do, so we could help mold and brand myself into however they see I could get onto the shows that we agree on that I should be on. Now, you bring up an interesting question about, you know, an interesting point, more or less. Um, how about you want to get an actor, a uh, manager? So how does one get a manager, and what do you think it does for your career? Okay, so first, you cross both fingers, you get on both knees, and you pray. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, so there's a few different ways to do it. You could, if you're union, you can get what's called the call sheet, and it has <clears throat> a, a breakdown of like all the agents, managers, casting directors, production companies, pretty much throughout the country. And you can you can mail out to them. You could uh, what what I'm doing is I'm taking workshops with the managers and sitting with them and staying in touch with them on everything I'm doing until uh, as uh, as my mom says I'm going through the process where I'm kissing a bunch of frogs until I find my prince. <laughs> All right. Now, the next question I was going to ask you is, what was, going back to, I mentioned this before, but what was your very first thing you ever did, said, you know what, I want to be an actor, what was the very first step that you said, I'm going to take it? Was it an acting class? Was it an acting role? Was it just a short play? What was that very first thing that gave you the kick in the ass, said, you know what, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. Uh, well, it um, it actually happened twice. <laughs> um, when I was about 12, 13 years old, my father had a off-off Broadway production that he wanted me to be a part of. It was my first professional gig supporting role. And when the show ended, I just I wanted more. I loved it. It was a dream come true. And I pursued, pursued, pursued. And when I was about 20, 21, I got into a really bad car accident. Uh, shattered both legs, my lungs collapsed, uh, tore every ligament from like here to here. I was unconscious for a few months and I had a, a traumatic, TBI, uh, traumatic brain injury, in my front right lobe, which affects my short-term memory and my ability to control my emotions. Um, when I got out of the hospital, I was very hesitant towards getting back 
into acting. It was a lot of lines I would have to learn and a lot of a lot of work I would have to do. A lot of I would have to have like a very a very very good temperament on the field and the the um, set. And I kind of put it away for like a, only a few months. <laughs> and um, my father brought me to a show that one of his friends was acting in, uh, of, mice, of, mice, of Mice and Men. And my father's friend, Phil LaRocco, played a character in it. And just watching him and sitting there and watching the show, just halfway through the show, I just the fire just lit back up. And I was like, what am I doing? How could I... How could I walk away from this business? It's so beautiful. It's so much fun. And when the show ended, I walked back up to my dad and said, I was wrong. I can't step away from this. I have to continue pursuing. And once I said that to him, he looked at me and said, well, that's great. Because I just finished writing a one-man show that's about 80 pages with just the actor on the stage for about an hour and a half. Let's go ahead and test that brain injury. And I just took about two, three months working on the script. Very, a lot of lines. <laughs> and it was, it went awesome though. Uh, the show went up. We ran for about three, four weeks. After it finished running, the company asked us to run for another two weeks. So we did that. And when I finished doing the show, um, a producer came up to me and said they wanted to tour the show. So I spent about two, three years touring the northeast coast of the country doing the show. And, oh, dude, it was, wait, what's that word my mom says? Living the dream. <laughs> No, absolutely. As long as you find something you love doing, yeah, it's not work. It's actually passion. Well, with that being said, we're going to take a quick come also break. And with the last couple of minutes left, I'm going to pass the show over to you. And we're going to have fun with it. Sweet. Hi, I'm Taylor Kilgore. Hello, I'm actress producer Sandra Justice. Oh, I'm Sakina. Hey, I'm Allison Seal. I'm Ann Wells. Hey, I'm Carolyn Minton. Hi, it's Mimi Chin. This is Rebecca L. Mayhead. Hi, guys. This is Danielle Clare. Hi, I'm Devin Nelson. Hi, I'm Stephanie Herrera. Hi, everyone. I'm Giovanna. And Hi, I'm Giovanni Espiritu. Hi, I'm Jennifer Elizabeth Masters. Hi, everybody. My name is Jewel Cola Bolt. Hi, I'm Julia Brothers. Hi, I'm Laura Saltman. Hi, I'm Annika Skiba. Hi, I'm Bailey Heath. And I'm Enchanter Shane. And My name is Amanda Corey. Hi, I'm Megan Gillette. And I'm Berkeley Pickle. I'm Briley Williamson. And I'm Gabby Possible. I think I'm Claire. Hi, I'm Bridget Kingsley. And Jude, this is Dr. Christina. Hi, my name is Jacqueline T. D. Huynh with Integrative Mind. This is Jillian Michelle Johnston. Hi, I'm Kelsey Kinsley. I'm Carrie Zane. Hi, my name is Kimberly Michelle Doherty. Hey, I'm Laura Menino. Hi, I'm Deborah Jensen. I'm Linda Collins. Hi, I'm Marissa Joy Davis. This is Michelle Wong. And I'm Nancy Rose. My name is Brandy Hunt. And Hello, my name is Raven Wynn. Hi there, my name is Giovanna Vidal. Hi, I'm Monica Thomas. Hi, I'm Paisley Blackburn. I'm Ashley Burgess. Hi, my name is Jeanette Abney. Hi, I'm Sharon Spink. Hey, this is Samantha Moore. Hi. I'm Melody Jones. Hi, my name is Becky Yee. Hi, you're watching the Keith Andrew Network. Ladies and gentlemen, I am your host, Keith Andrew, and you're watching the Keith Andrew Network. Make sure to like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the little bell icon so you're notified when all episodes, brand new episodes, are online. Make sure to also go to the Facebook fan page, like it, you know, to, you can watch my sites and all my episodes on two places, Facebook.com, Keith Angie Network, and also on YouTube. Make sure you hit the little bell icon, subscribe. It's funny because more people like my Facebook fan page than actually YouTube. But long story about that, I had a YouTube account, took it down, they took it down, I had to do it over, now it's taking a long time. But my Facebook fan page seems to be going faster. But anyway, Make sure to like and subscribe to both Facebook and YouTube. I'm also available on Twitter and Instagram. 
Oh, it's the last seven minutes and counting. I'm going to pass the show over to you. Was there anything you wanted to know or talk about? This is your time. Um, you're killing it, dude. Is this is I'm very I feel very very humbled, and this is this is so this is so awesome what you're doing. I really I I appreciate that you're going out of your way to do this show to try to reach out to people and show them what you're doing. You're you're killing it, man. You, you're killing it. It's awesome. No, I appreciate it, and actually, let me uh, change it up a little bit. You know, I usually save this for the end, but I'm going to ask you now. When I first approached you to be a guest on my talk show, what was your first reaction, and what made you say yes? Oh. And you can be brutally honest. <laughs> uh, my first reaction was, why does this guy want to interview me? <laughs> but, um... Once you once you explained why you wanted to interview me and everything, I was like, "All right, all right, cool, cool, sounds sounds good." Um, when when we first spoke, I'm not gonna lie, I was a little hesitant towards saying yes because I wasn't sure if you were just trying to reach out to people to show them, "Hey, it can be done. You can do what you want to do." Or if you were, look at all these people that are saying, I can't do this. I'm showing them I could do this. Arr! Like, to and, and seeing how you're just very outgoing and very caring and very, very heartfelt towards people who have whatever disab disability they're fighting to show them, hey, look, it can be done. With persistence and never giving up, it can be done. And... Just from speaking to you the few times that we did trying to set it up, I just figured I would be a fool to not jump on this opportunity and hang out with you for a little bit. No, I appreciate it. And now after doing the show, would you recommend it for anyone out there? And what would you tell all those naysayers that turned me down? Uh... I would say if you are an artist or a social media figure or anyone who is trying to build like a, uh, I don't know if fan base is the correct word, but trying to build a following, it's free publicity. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Do it. Why not? <laughs> And to those who aren't trying to build a following and just the average grinder and that would say no to you, I would say, hey, just, just give him a chance. This guy's a pretty cool dude. It's fun to hang out with him. If you got a little while, why not? No, absolutely. My biggest thing is I to befriend everyone. And like everyone, like for an example, how I message Stu, you know, I extend my hand in friendship, told you what I'm doing, and I do that to every single person, you know, people in high school, college, but what they're annoys me is they tell me to go blank myself, and they're like, even as like, did you read the message? And yeah. it's kind of like, and you're still telling me to F off, and or you have other people who be like, I don't have a disability. Why you want me on your show? I don't. Ha or you, I have someone else that I said um, talked to recently. It's like, isn't your show for people with disabilities? So and why are you coming to me because I don't have one? And yeah, people are just assholes. But you, you know, you know the thing, they they might not realize that in able to help someone with a disability. You don't need to have a disability. Right. Like, uh, some people might just be looking at your show and they see it. Okay, it's a, it's a disabled person reaching out to disabled people, trying to, to show them and urge them and help them bridge the gap and do everything that they need to do to get to the next level. And they... If if they're if they're kids that you're reaching out to that are saying hey go f yourself blah blah blah, 
they might just not realize it. I mean, you, you, you do got to know, in today's age, everyone gets more spam yeah. than the regular mail. So they might just be, they might just jump at, oh, it's just some spam, blah, 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 blah. Hey, go, why are you bothering me? Like, they don't, they, they don't realize how, how much of a difference one person can make. And it, it'll it get them eventually. It'll get them down the line. Hopefully sooner rather than later. But, yeah. No, I even came across some wrestlers, you know. Uh, one of my favorites was Amy DeMont. And I said, you know, a big fan, honor to meet you. I would love to have you on the show. And she looked at me and like, I thought your show was about disabilities. It is. And I bent my whip and I said, oh, Jesus, you too? And it's like, you don't have to have, and I said it, you don't have to have a disability to be on the show. You're supporting a good message, you're making a new friend out of it, and you're helping me reach my goals. And by that, you're helping me turn myself into an example and say, if I can do it, you can do it too. It isn't like, well, I need a disability to be on your show, or I need some you know, stick, you know, I have to do. Or some kind of gimmick. Well, you know, you know the thing. What what it could possibly be is maybe the the message you're putting out there might portray it's the disabled helping the disabled. Yeah. Because I'm not gonna lie to you. When you when you came to me, I thought like you had researched. My, my background, like my father having his disability and my disability, but I, I've come to realize throughout our time talking, it's not per se the 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 inter the in, the interviewers. Yeah, I'm the interviewer. You're the interviewee, or the other vice versa, whichever whichever way it is. It, it it's not so much as much as two disabled people talking, as much as two people. No disability meant two people talking about how you can impact people's lives. Yes, yes, yes. So may, maybe it's just in the message you're sending out, maybe they might just, it might just read off as, hey, I see your disability, let's, let, let's do something. Or, yeah. or maybe, maybe, maybe something in the message saying, reaching out to people, whether you're disabled or non-disabled, to, to help the disabled community grow or, or I don't I don't I don't I don't know the, the correct word I needed the source app to get that but yeah I, I, I get it but like you said you know it's all about giving someone a chance and what's the worst that can happen you think okay yeah you wasted a half hour but hey yeah, I'm not asking for money I'm not asking it's, for a handout but that's basically a normal conversation, and you're making a new friend out of it. But I do have a couple questions for you off the air. But wrapping up, it was a real honor and privilege having you as a guest, and I'm looking forward to part two down the road. Yeah, man, let's do it.